Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my August TBR. Today I'm going to be telling you about my reading plans for August where I'm going to be focusing on reading classics and specifically on reading classics that are not Victorian. Many of you who watch my channel will know that I really like reading classics, I read a lot of classics um, and a lot of the classics that I read and have read are Victorian literature. I love Victorian literature a lot um, and in general kind of 19th century British literature as a whole and um, before the Victorian period as well, I really really enjoy. And though I do read things beyond British 19th century literature, um, I always feel like my natural instinct when picking up a classic is to read a 19th century British book. So I thought I would dedicate a whole month to reading classics that are not from 19th century Britain. So I have a big stack of classics behind me, like a really big stack of classics. I mean like I have 25 books on my TBR for this month. There's almost no way I'm going to get through all of these this month because 25 books in a month is a lot and also I'm filming this on like the 7th of August and I haven't finished any of them yet. I'm halfway through one of the biggest ones um, but I haven't finished anything so we will see how that goes. However some of these are exceptionally short um, and then I've got a few longer classics. I've got some books that have been on my TBR for a really really long time and then I also got a bunch of books out of the library which are mostly the really short classics I have. Libraries have just started opening up again where I am um, and I basically went to my local library and got like all of the shortest classics I could find. So this weekend when I'm filming it and last weekend when you are watching it um, I don't have much on so I'm gonna try and like do my own mini reading challenge and see how many short classics I can read in one weekend. Um, I will probably vlog that so that will be up later in the month um, but for now I will tell you about some of the books I'm planning on reading in August. Before we get started as well I will say that I'm being fairly loose with my definition of a classic in this video. Um, I think previously I've said before that I often use like 1980 as the cutoff point and like books before 1980 are classics in my head and books after 1980 are not but there are some books from the 80s in this. I think the reason why I've said 1980 before is because like Kazu Ishiguro's first fiction was published in the 1980s and because he's a contemporary writer and he's still writing I find it really hard to think of them as classics because he's still publishing books um, but I think a book written in the 80s by an author who is no longer around feels more like a classic in my head even though it might be from the same time period which doesn't really make any sense but you know we're just gonna be vague for this video. So like I said quite a few of these are books that I have on my physical shelves that are on my physical TBR. So the first of these is The Ragged Trousered Philanthropists by Robert Tressel. This is a novel from 1914 which focuses on um, the working class in Britain specifically on a group of men who are house painters working in a small English town um, and it looks at their lives and and the struggle they go through and it is a bit of a socialist manifesto as well. So this is the one I've already started, I'm just over halfway through um, and I am absolutely loving it. It's so good. Anyway. Then I also have The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. This is a 19th century French classic and this I think may be the book that I have had on my TBR the longest. I've definitely had this on my shelves for more than 10 years um, but I'm gonna be finally reading this this month. Me and Madeline from Made With Books are gonna be buddy reading it later on in August and I'm really really excited to finally get to it. I read Les Miserables by Victor Hugo when I was like 14 and I loved it so much and I've just never read anything else by him since and that makes me sad so I'm very excited to get to this. Another 19th century French classic on my TBR for this month is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I've been meaning to read this for a very very long time as well. I don't know too much about this, I believe there is some kind of revenge story and I think that there is a man who has been falsely imprisoned and then when he gets out of prison tries to have revenge on the people who imprisoned him but I don't really know. The Count of Monte Cristo is a lot of people's favourite book and it is the favourite book of a lot of people, um, booktubers and people I know in real life, who I really respect and whose reading taste I really respect. So I feel like I'm really, 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 really gonna love this. I'm not gonna read this in physical form, I'm not gonna read this edition because this edition is actually abridged, which I didn't realise when I got it, um, but I do have this on audiobook. It's a 50 hour audiobook, so I'm going to be listening to that. Definitely not going to finish that this month because it is 50 hours long. Um, but I'm hoping to listen to this over the course of August and September. Finish it off at the end of September hopefully. I'm going to be so sad if I don't love it. I feel like it's built up so much in my head. Then for something completely different I also have Dune by Frank Herbert. This is an American science fiction modern classic from 1965 which I have had on my shelves for a very very long time as well and I've been meaning to read for ages. I know it's set on a desert planet and I know that there is some kind of spice that is incredibly valuable because of its properties which people are after and that's about all they know. 
but I've heard amazing things. Then I also have this short story collection. This is the Penguin Book of Japanese Short Stories. So this is an anthology of Japanese short stories. Um, I'm not sure that these are all classics, though it is published as Penguin Classics. Looking through the contents, there's some authors who I recognise, some of whom I know are classic authors, and some of whom are contemporary still writing, um, like Banana Yoshimoto and Yoko Ogawa. So I'm really excited to read this, and I'm really excited to discover some more Japanese authors from this. I've read quite a lot of Japanese literature last year and then this year so far I think I've only read like one or two Japanese books um, which saddens me because I love Japanese fiction but I also kind of feel like I've got to a point where I don't really know where to go next in Japanese fiction both in contemporary fiction but especially in Japanese classics so I think this should hopefully really help and I should hopefully discover lots of new authors through this that I can go and read more from in the future. Then I also have The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. This is a 19th century American classic. Obviously I really love 19th century British literature but I have read very very little 19th century American literature um, and I have heard impressive things about Huckleberry Finn. I know that the main character Huckleberry Finn runs away with a runaway slave um, but I don't really know much about the rest of it so I'm intrigued and we will see how I get on with it. Then I also have The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford. This is a British classic from 1915. The only thing I really know about it is that it is about a marriage and a secret within that marriage um, but it sounds really good and I always hear amazing things about Ford Maddox Ford so hopefully I will enjoy this one. Then I also have The Heart of the Matter by Graham Greene. This is a British novel from 1948. And I think most of this is set in West Africa and is inspired by um, Graham Greene's experience during the war in Sierra Leone. I'm curious about this. I've heard good things about Graham Greene. I don't feel fully convinced that I'm going to love Graham Greene, but I don't know why I think that. I don't have any um, reason for thinking that. So we will see how I get on with this. Then I also have The Awakening by Kate Chopin. This is a late 19th century American novel. I think it's about a woman's journey of self-discovery, um, which sounds very interesting. And I've also read some of Kate Chopin's short stories last year, which I absolutely loved. I thought they were just fantastic, like genuinely some of the best short stories I've ever read. So I'm very, very excited for this. I think this is going to be one of the favourites of the month, I hope. So we will see. Then another one which I might get to this month, but it's not necessarily a big priority this month is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy by John le Carre. This is a modern British classic from 1974. It is a spy thriller, I guess. I have seen the film and it's one of my favourite films so I'm really excited to actually read the book. I haven't read anything by John le Carre before but I have enjoyed many adaptations of his books on screen so I think it's about time I finally read one. Then two other books which I will physically own but I don't yet which I have ordered and are coming to me which I'm hoping to read this month and um, are two very other short classics. One is Passing by Nella Larson which is an American classic from the late 1920s which I believe follows two African-American women one of whom is very pale skinned and passes as white um, and it looks at their relationship and the relationships with other people around them. I'm really excited to read this one I've heard great things and hopefully my copy will be arriving soon. Now along with that I also ordered a Penguin Little Black classic um, of The Death of Ivan Illich by Leo Tolstoy. This is a long short story I think by Leo Tolstoy which is supposed to be amazing. I asked on Twitter the other week for recommendations for classics in translation and people recommended this one so I thought I would read it. I have read two of Leo Tolstoy's big books before War and Peace and Anna Karenina so it'll be nice to read something tiny by him instead. Then along with listening to The Count of Monte Cristo this month there are two other audiobooks which I am hoping to get to both of which are quite short. So one is The Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston which I am listening to at the moment. Um, I've only got about two hours left actually so I'm really far through and really really enjoying it. This is a 1930s American novel about a woman called Janie um, who at the beginning of the book comes back to the town she used to live in and is kind of looking back on her life and her three marriages. Clearly it's a book about being black and female in a time where both of those things made you a second class citizen and it is absolutely amazing. I think it might genuinely be one of the most beautifully written books I've ever read. And then I'm also hoping to listen to The Colour Purple by Alice Walker which I have on Audible. The Colour Purple is an American modern classic. It's a book from 1982. I know it is an epistolary novella and I know it is supposed to be truly amazing. I don't know that much more than that but I'm really looking forward to reading this one. 
And now onto the library books. Like I said, I got a bunch of short books out of the library, so we will see how I get on with them. First I have The Pearl by John Steinbeck. This is a tiny little novella. This is a 20th century American classic. I read Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck like two years ago and I didn't really like it very much. Um, and everyone seemed to think it's truly amazing and I didn't get anything out of it. And I feel like maybe I need to give John Steinbeck another try, so I'm gonna try The Pearl and see how I get on with it because it's tiny. Then I also have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This is a British classic from the 1920s. I read The Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf years and years ago and felt mediumly about it. I quite liked it. I didn't love it, but I feel like I would like to give Virginia Woolf another try and see if I get on with her. If I also find Mrs. Dalloway middling, I probably won't read anything more by her, but I hear amazing things about this and I think it's set over one day, which I really like, so we will see how I get on with it. Another 20th century American classic, I have Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. I have never read anything by J.D. Salinger. I hear many things about him. I don't know very much about this at all, so I'm just gonna go into it and see what I think. It's very short, so we will see. Another Another 20th century American classic, I have Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. Um, this is set in 1940s New York, that is basically all I know about it, but I hear good things and the film's supposed to be amazing too. So I've always heard good things about Truman Capote and been interested in reading something by him, but I feel like In Cold Blood, which is his other very famous thing, um, would not necessarily be for me, so I'm gonna try Breakfast at Tiffany's and see how I get on with it. Then I thought I would also get some Agatha Christie out of the library because I love Agatha Christie. I have read quite a lot of Agatha Christie before, but this is um, Murder at the Vicarage, which is the first Miss Marple novel, um, so I'm currently reading my way through all of the Poirot books in order, um, but I have read a few Miss Marple books too, but definitely out of order, so I thought I would read one from the beginning. I love Agatha Christie a lot, I love her writing style, I love her cosy mystery vibes and her books are always like a real like page turner speed through for me so I think this is going to be really good fun. Then I also have this, this is Dublin 4 by Maeve Binchy. Um, I don't know to what extent I should be classing this as a classic and I have read some other things by Maeve Binchy that she wrote in the 90s which I would like sort of consider commercial women's fiction. I feel like Maeve Binchy has a lot in common with contemporary commercial women's fiction but I also feel like she has a lot in common with Barbara Pym um, so who knows. I have read one book by Maeve Binchy before which was Evening Classes and I absolutely loved it. I really 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 loved her writing style so I'm very excited to read more by her um, and this is a collection of short stories all set in Dublin and um, that's all I really know but I think I'm gonna really really enjoy these because I loved Evening Classes so much. Then I also I have Beloved by Toni Morrison. This is an American novel from 1987. So I think this is the um, latest book I have on this list. So, you know, you might not consider this a classic, but I'm gonna put it on this TBR anyway. I've been meaning to read something by Toni Morrison for ages and I never have. This, I believe, is a historical novel set in the 19th century and is about a woman who used to be a slave having her new life and looking back on her old life. I've heard amazing things about Toni Morrison, so I'm looking forward to finally getting around to something by her. Then I also have 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup. This is a mid 19th century American memoir written by a black man who was born free in New York and then was later kidnapped into slavery and lived as a slave for 12 years in Louisiana. Um, there was a film made of this man's life story several years ago, which I saw at the time and found incredibly moving. So I would like to read the original nonfiction book that it is based on. And um, so hopefully I'll get to this this month. Then my last library book, this is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is a novel from 1963 and I believe it follows a woman who is struggling with depression. I don't know much more about it than that but I have heard very good things about it. I really like Sylvia Plath's poetry um, which I read quite a lot of as a teenager though I haven't read it for a while so I'm hoping that I will find this a really interesting read um, and hopefully get to it later this month. Then I have two things that I have on ebook, one from the library and one that I own. Um, both of these are classics in translation. When I was looking through this TBR I didn't feel like I had as many classics in translation as I would have liked. Um, it's quite an American heavy list um, which is different from my usual British heavy list um, but still not as varied as I would like. So I have two ebooks which I'm hoping to read. One is Death in Venice by Thomas Mann. This is a German novel from the 1910s. I don't know very much about it but it was one of the books that people recommended to me on Twitter um, and I have heard great things about Thomas Mann as a writer. This is a short novella so I'm hoping that I will read this and if I like Thomas Mann as a writer I can go on to read more by him so I'm looking forward to that. Then I also have a 19th century Brazilian novella called The Alienist. 
by Machado de Assis. I don't know too much about this except that the main character is a physician of some kind um, but I have heard good things and it was another recommended to me on Twitter so I will take that recommendation and see how I get on with it. And that is my very very long August TBR. I might end up reading some other things. When I reserved all of the rest of those books from the library I also reserved some other non-Victorian classics um, which haven't come into the library yet. So if they do I might add some of them in and read some of them too and if not I will you know try and read those books in another way somehow. And then I'm also gonna read at least one contemporary book this month. I'm gonna read The Switch by Beth O'Leary because I have um, a book club for that at the end of the month. Um, but apart from that I'm going to try and focus on the classics this month and see how I get on. Let me know if there are any particular favourites of yours in this list that you think I must especially make sure I get to this month and I think that is all. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what your favourite classics are that aren't 19th century British classics, um, especially what your favourite classics in translation are. That would be really helpful. I think that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. <laughs>